Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today we're going to wrap up our little rankings, series of rankings episodes going top 10 in each position. We're going to do tight ends today before we get into some other episodes coming up. And we'll, we'll come back to ranks and do our full rankings episodes, I think in probably mid to late July, right before the fantasy drafts get started, which shoot isn't very far away because it's just about June. So we're almost there. But if you guys want to see the full ranks, I got my full ranks up on fantasyfootballprofit.com. You can go check them out there. Go to our Instagram page, Fantasy Football Profit, or Twitter, which is the FF Profit. Check us out in all those places. You can see our different ranks going on. But... I thought we'd jump right into it, Jeff. Tight, top 10 tight end ranks. And I don't think these top three are going to be any surprise at all. And the top one's definitely not. So that's pretty easy. We'll just go one to 10. We'll go talk about ours here. Number one, Travis Kelsey for me. Yeah, same for me. It's just no brainer. This is very, this is the, he's the new Gronk, I would say, kind of a thing. It's, you pencil him in at number one. Some people might, I don't know, to try to be cute, drop him down to number two or something. But I don't see why you would do that. It's he's pretty clearly number one to me. Yeah, and <laughs> if you really wanted to, but the last three years he was, you know, number one, number two, number one, and like you said, now that Gronk is officially, you know, out of the running, he, he's by far the most talented tight end, and he happens to be in the best position as well. And you know, you could even make an argument that. Uh, if they don't have Tyreek Hill, that he could be in for a slightly larger workload, which is a terrifying thing. So it, I think this is a no-brainer. Yeah, without a doubt. It, it has to be. And yeah, the Tyreek Hill thing could probably only help him because it's not all going to go to Sammy Watkins. There's just no way that it could, that could happen, basically. As much as I'd like to see that happen, it, it just it just couldn't. So he has to benefit. And I don't think it's going to matter if teams, you know, try to key on him because he is that good. And there's, a, there, I mean, there is like a Sammy Watkins. There's other people they can throw the ball to. So I think he's going to be great. And there's, you can't go wrong with him. The only issue or the only question, I guess, is, is he worth drafting earlier than you normally would draft the tight end? Is he that good where you would draft the tight end before? I mean, we like to wait typically on tight ends, but. Does he change that? I would I would think about it. I really would. I think he is good enough um, and safe enough in order to give you a relatively large advantage over your opponent. So without a doubt, I mean, you could probably clump in, you know, the next two guys on our list, which I'm assuming are the same. And, you know, if you're playing that, if you're matching up tight end to tight end, then, you know, week to week, you're not exactly sure. But he does give you quite an advantage and you know, tight end, as we saw last year, very up and down. So there's only a few guys that really give you, the, you know, that that guaranteed week to week production. He happens to be one of them. He has, happens to be the best at it. Um, I still don't like to go tight end too early. But in my mind, especially if I'm doing a snake draft, that is where, hey, you know, round four comes around. And I'm if I feel like, hey, I like a few more guys lower down. Uh, Kelsey is still there. I think about it. I'm not sure if I would do it, but uh, you know, I, I think he is a good enough player in order to give it a legitimate thought. And if someone did it, I would not blame them. So it, it kind of falls right in there. But I, I probably wouldn't go in the first three rounds. But that's more of my, you know, my feelings about it. Yeah, the third, the third's interesting. It's I'd have to be in the back end of the third to consider it. I think. Um. But it's again, it's it's what players left there. Yeah, I think I think the third's too early. I think I'm trying to think of my scenarios here, and I just doing um the mock drafts. Everything everything I've done so far in mock drafts is I want to get those three really good players because I think the the position they drop off after that. So yeah, I think a fourth is I still he's very good, but I think there's I'm still I'm okay waiting because I think. Possibly somebody else could jump up. I don't know who that guy is necessarily, but I, I have players I like down the list that we'll talk about that I've always, I've kind of liked. So 
I agree. I'm, and, I'm okay waiting. And, yeah, and there are some really upside guys that will you can wait a lot longer and get. Um, but, you know, it all depends on your draft. You kind of have to know who is going to go where, do enough mock drafts so you kind of get the feel for it. But, yeah, I, I don't I don't hate on anyone that takes Kelsey, you know, fourth round or on because I really do think he is just that good. So we'll go to number two here, and this is where I honestly have debated and changed my rank so many times on this. It's between it's between two players. So I'll just say I went with Zach Ertz here. I did I went back to Zach Ertz. I've changed it around a couple of times. I had Kittle here at once, but I've gone back to Ertz. And some of it is just the fact that he had a ridiculous amount of targets last year. I put out a list of about top the top ten players in targets for last season. And Ertz is the only or other than Kelsey, but Ertz is the only tight end to make it. He was the sixth player in the league last year in targets more targets than Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs, Michael Thomas, Mike Evans, as Eckerts, he was only behind Julio, Devontae Adams, Antonio Brown, Juju Smith-Schuster, and DeAndre Hopkins. And even if that goes down a little bit, I think he's still here. I think he, I'm the targets alone put me, have give him the edge over Kittle, even though I really like Kittle and I'm curious to how Kittle's going to play with Garoppolo. So, Still went with Ertz, but what did you do here? Gotcha. That's a very good um, – that's an interesting point about, you know, whether or not Garoppolo will have that same, you know, chemistry that, that he found with the backup uh, QBs last year. I went with Kittle. Okay. I I like him a little bit better, and I, all your points are extremely valid. It, he had a crazy amount of targets, but Kittle did too. I mean, he was 20 targets behind, and I know that sounds like a lot, but when you're getting, you know, 156 compared to 136 – especially on a second year guy. Um, and uh, Ertz also, you know, had an eight touchdowns, which is wonderful. Um, I think Kittle is a little better of an athlete at this point. And I think Kittle is, um, is more, it's almost more needed in that San Francisco offense. I know they have a lot of weapons, but I think Kittle is their best one. And I think that uh, he's kind of the guaranteed go-to guy. So I really like him, but if you wanted to go Ertz, I think these guys are almost interchangeable. The other thing I will say about Ertz is um, if Wentz is at his peak, which I think that he will be closer to that this year, um, he's hard to go against. But, uh, you know, that goes against my Kittle prediction. But the other thing that helps me is I really do think that Goddard, the second-year tight end uh, in that Eagles offense, not that he will, you know, take too much away from Ertz, but I really do think that he is a talented player, and I think that we'll get him into the fold a little bit more. I think it'll be a lot of two tight end sets, but I, I think that he is a very good uh, red zone target as well. So I think, you know, maybe that shaves off a little bit from Ertz because I just can't imagine, um, to Craig's point, I can't imagine him, uh, you know, getting back to that 156 targets. I feel like that is using him... Um, uh, to to the the ceiling of his you know durability, so in that in that case I think either one is interchangeable. But I like Kittle a little bit more. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I I debated this so much, and actually on the last ranks I did, pretty much I changed Ertz today again ahead of him, and it, a lot of it was the targets, but they're so close for me. I'm okay with either of them, and um, honestly. If they go around later than Kelsey, I'm okay with where they go in the draft to get them sometimes. And it just depends, I guess. If they're in the fourth, I'm still kind of iffy. In the fifth, I'm, I'd get either one of them. I'd be fine with it. And it's still not my favorite strategy, but I would be okay with it. And I think you can build a pretty good team that way. And I think they're, I mean, they're both going to be, they should be really good. There's no reason any of these, these guys should disappoint. I don't. I just don't see how they, they could be a disappointment No, with how good they were. I agree. And I really do think that these three, I, I would put Kelsey kind of on a pedestal on his own, but I really do think that these three guys are tier one. Um, I mean, I, like you said, you can't go wrong. I mean, they have the targets. They're all in an offense that benefits them greatly. They all seem to. We don't know exactly for Garoppolo yet, but they all have good quarterbacks you know, throwing to them. So... I mean, any one of these guys will be deadly. They're lock and load. You don't have to even worry about it for any week. Doesn't matter matchup. Doesn't matter anything. They're that good. So after this, I think you take a little more risk. But obviously, 
uh, you know, you get them a little late in the draft too, because all three of those guys will go relatively high. Yeah. I think after this, it's pretty much almost all risk. It's um, at least in my next couple, actually, you know, the, the, there's a lot of risk here. I'll just say my fourth is OJ Howard. He made number four for me just because of how good he looked before he got injured last year. I thought he was on his way to becoming one of these guys. And because the position isn't very deep, I don't see why you don't put him up here. It's, it's still potential, but we saw the glimpses of him being an extremely good player last year. So he made number four for me. And I think he's, I think he's there. I think he's that good. Yep. Yeah, he made number four for me as well. Um, and really, I mean, I, I like how I, I almost pair off tight ends because I, I believe that the next two guys are very close, but four and five for me, um, just to put you, uh, put it out there, uh, Evan Ingram was number five for me. I feel like these two are insanely close. I think OJ Howard is a little better of an athlete. And the reason why I bumped OJ Howard above him just slightly is because I think he is a uh, slightly better of a red zone threat. And I also believe that in the offense that he is in, where they really don't have a running game yet, I mean, you're hoping to see something, but they have to pass it. Jameis Winston uh, can go down the field much better than Eli Manning. Um, So I think it's a difference between big playability with O.J. Howard and um, probably more targets with with Evan Ingram and Eli Manning. So I like... um, I like Evan Ingram to get a little more of the yardage, but I think OJ Howard is going to be an absolute monster this year, wreak havoc, and I think he'll get in the end zone quite a few times. So I went with Ingram at number five too. There we go. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> this one, I actually maybe I might like a player or two below him, and I'm not 100% sold on the situation with the team right now with Eli, but – I just go back to how good he was every time Odell is not on the field. I couldn't agree with you more. I I honestly believe that Odell leaving in a weird way will benefit Evan Ingram. Yeah, because he's going to be, I think he will become the main target here more than Shepard. I think it's, I think it's Ingram. I think he's really that good. And the tail, he disappointed last year, but yeah, we, I remember we talked about this before, but you pulled up those numbers when he, when Odell's not on the field, it's just crazy how much better he was. And hey, maybe that's what he needs. He just needs to be the the guy who gets all the targets. He maybe can't succeed if he's not the main one, but he probably is their most talented player right now at wide receiver. I think Sterling Shepard's fine, but I think Evan Ingram's more of a ta- more of a talented player. Yeah, and and you you saw. I mean, he can be an absolute magnet for targets, and we've seen him go double digit targets, which is very unusual for any tight end. Unless you're talking about a Kittle or Kelsey, really, or Ertz, one of those top three guys that we you know keep fawning over, um, he he has that ability to get that many targets in a game. I think that this will be the first year because last year he did. He was hobbled. He was hurt. He only played in eleven games. And he, what I like to see is the fact that his catch, catch percentage went up. I usually don't look into it that that much, but when you're trying to figure out has he improved from year to year. Um, that is something that I had to look at because of the limited amount of games that he did go for. But I mean, you know, he had 64 targets in 11 games, 577 yards with three touchdowns. I know they don't sound overwhelming, but he played much better than what those tell you. And I think he's going to get targets and be pretty good. And the problem is I can't find myself drafting Devin Ingram a lot. It's, it's a weird thing. It's like in that spot where I don't want to pick him. Right. Well, um, I'm, yeah, and he, he's one of them. I, I don't know how low he will drop, to be honest, because I don't know people, how much people, faith the same will, people will put in the Giants. Yeah, the Giants themselves just kind of, they worry me. Without yeah. a doubt. I mean, look at Sterling Shepard will be a number one wide receiver. And I mean, where do you think he's going to go? Yeah, I mean, he's earliest he's in the 30s, the best case, I think. Exactly. So I, I think that, I mean... And that was a big reason why I think he'll get a ton of targets. But if you really do look at it, and I don't believe in Eli anymore, and Saquon is amazing, so they can lean on him. And that is really the the big difference. When you can run or lean on that run game, that's very different than what O.J. Howard brings to the field where they have to throw it. So, you know, I, I totally understand where people are, are very uncertain, but 
you know, after this, there's even more risk or less <laughs> talent. So I, that's why Evan Ingram makes it at number five for me. So number six, I think we will differ here. I'm going to guess you have Hunter Henry. <laughs> yeah, good guess. Okay. I figured you'd probably have Hunter Henry here. And I differ slightly because I am going to go with, um, maybe you could guess mine. I don't know if you, you know Njoku? my ranks as well. David, David Njoku. <laughs> <laughs> We've done this too many times, I guess. So I went with Njoku. I put Hunter Henry seventh. And it's, I mean, Hunter Henry has the talent is there. So, but why I would want to put Njoku over? Because again, these guys, all these players are here. This like Howard Ingram, Njoku, Henry. It is all the guys that have just insane amount of talent who haven't quite put it together. Ingram has at times. Hunter Henry showed it with the touchdowns and then he got injured. So we don't really know. But Njoku, he hasn't done even as, he hasn't done as much as Henry, I guess. I'll say that. I guess Hunter coming off the injury. So that's why I'm going to put Njoku ahead. I think people are kind of overlooking Njoku here because you got, you got Odell now. He's still got Jarvis Landry. People are just thinking all oh, the targets are going to those guys. I can I can see a scenario where David Njoku is the the red zone guy, and people are looking at you know Odell, looking at Jarvis Landry, and just forgetting about David Njoku, and he's going to get touchdowns. And I think touchdowns alone will give you value at tight end this year. That's all you need to become one of the better ones. Look at Eric Ebron last year. It's pretty much the same situation. He just got touchdown after touchdown and became good because of that. So Njoku, I can see a scenario where he is very good this year with, you know, because everyone's concentrating everybody else and you're not going to have to pay much to get it. I've been able to get into Joku in every mock draft I've done and it's late. It's really late. So he's an easy one to get on your team. But why are you going Hunter Henry ahead of him? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm really going for the upside and obviously dear, I mean, dear Lord, everyone knows at this point, Hunter Henry is, He's kind of the tight end that never came to be that I fell in love with. Um, you know, I, I had O.J. Howard last year. I had Kelsey before he hit. I usually do pretty well on these. And Hunter Henry might be the guy that just can't stay healthy, and maybe I'm wrong about him. But when he is in there, he is so freaking good. It is scary. And he is so good in the red zone as well. And we all saw it with as long as Rivers is still there. And I still believe he has the stuff in order to be a top – you know, a very good quarterback in the NFL. Um, and we, we saw how good he was with Antonio Gates just throwing touchdown after touchdown, especially in the red zone. Last year was supposed to be Hunter Henry's breakout performance. He was finally going to be the number one tight end, and then he blew out his knee. The year before that, um, he had a lacerated kidney. I mean, it, it, the guy's had some really bad luck. But, I mean, you just look at his rookie season when you really shouldn't be doing anything your rookie season very few people do he came out and he scored eight touchdowns that's how good he is in the red zone and that's how much uh rivers throws to tight ends in the red zone the next year he only had four but once again he was you know he was playing second fiddle and he did get that injury so i think he only played 13 games i if he stays healthy i i don't see a world where he doesn't score if he stays healthy, I'll just say he's going to score, I would guess, 10 touchdowns. I just can't imagine him playing a full season at this point. You know, just with the injury history, I have to, you know, dial it back just a little bit and give it to the guys that have performed already. Um, but he, he is that kind of talent. He is a guy that is truly um, has the ability to, you know, to be talked about in, that, in those top three next year. So that's why I love him so much. Um, and that is why I, I put him at, at number six. It's definitely a risk reward. I think it's worth it, especially with the guys going underneath him. Yeah, and that's well, really that's what this tier is is just almost complete risk type players that have talent. Because uh, there's a lot of guys after this that I'm just not a big fan of. And if these guys don't work out, like Hunter Henry, no big deal. You find the next guy who's just going to be okay because you're not already not getting Kelsey Ertz Kittle anyway. But I don't know which one it's going to be for sure, but at least one of these guys is going to be a top one of the top challenging with them. I think there's no doubt, maybe even two of them. It's all, all of them really have a shot. So I, I mean, Hunter Henry, if he can stay healthy, I don't see how with that offense, he's not really, really good. Just, I like Njoku a little better, but who did you go seven? 
All right. So at number seven, this is where me and Craig are going to get into an argument. I have a feeling <laughs> because <laughs> I went with the, the hated Eric Ebron. Yeah. And figured. Yep. And so obviously he's a very good athlete. And last year was the first time he put it all together. He had 13 touchdowns. You can make a lot of arguments why he is going to have a regression and why you can't rely on him. But at number seven, there is no risk here. You take him. And even if he drops off by half of his touchdowns, which sure might happen, but if he if he scores seven touchdowns, he's worth that pick right there. So that's why I think there's no risk whatsoever. And I think he still has a very legitimate shot to tend for uh, that that double digit touchdown production once again. And even more so, just to kind of reiterate this, this guy is a he's a touchdown vulture, like. That is why you're having him. You're not coming in here. You don't think that he's going to go for, you know, a thousand yards receiving, especially with Jack Doyle back. But even when Jack Doyle was in there last year, he scored five touchdowns, even though his receptions went down by, you know, one, two a game, something like that. He was still very, very active in the red zone. And they didn't really add, you know, I mean, maybe you make a case for Funchess or something, but he is still their best red zone receiver because T.Y. Hilton's not that guy. And, you know, they got another burner in their rookie. So I, I really like his chances to repeat as a, a touchdown-dependent uh, tight end. And here, like like you said, Craig, if you score touchdowns, you're going to be mm-hmm. relevant. So I, I really still think that um, that you have to view him as a very good asset. And I think right now the consensus, um, I don't know exactly where they're at, but um, where, where do they have him? Uh, yeah, you know. Hovering, he's probably at the bottom of the top 10. But I, I think people are kind of brushing him off and saying he's a, a one-year guy. I still think he's very worthy of, uh, you know, consideration in, in that in these top spots. I, I, I did put him number eight. He made, he made number eight for me. And, yeah, as much as I didn't like Eric Ebron, and I still think he's going to drop balls in, you know, <laughs> terrible times for Colts, and he's, he still can make them – you know, upset at times. If they throw the ball to him like they did in the red zone last year again, how can you how can you not put him in the top ten? You have to. With you know, you just have to. He doesn't have to get all the targets in the world, but he's become their red zone the target. And I don't see that changing. Why don't there's really no reason that Andrew Luck would go away from it. You know, what what would be the reason? Jack Doyle's fine, but I think Eric Ebron's a much more talented tight end. And there was a reason the guy was drafted number 10 by the Lions. He wasn't drafted number 10 for no reason at all. He had He's an athletic freak. The guy really is. He just couldn't quit, put it together for many years. And he still, I don't think he's put it all together. He just became the f- favorite red zone target of a very good quarterback. And that's kind of what happened. And you can't, you can't um, overlook that as much as I want to. You got to stick him at number eight. Just, you got to do it. So. He made, he's number eight for me and he's not getting, he's not really getting overdrafted. So I'm, I'm okay with where he goes in the draft, where you get him. I really am. It's weird to say that, but I'm not, I guess I'm not as big of a Ebron hater this year removed from it. Maybe because the lions have their own potential, uh, you know, star tight end. Now. Mm-hmm, yeah. Which we we'll had to get in the right? top 10 once again, but you know, he, he won't make our list, but yeah, so that was, uh, he, so Ebron did go my number eight. So who's new? Your number eight. Number eight is where uh, Najoku ended okay. up for me. Yeah. So all all the points you made, uh, I, like you said, he he really is that good of an athlete. Um, and he you know surprisingly, I, I know that he was kind of under the radar, but he did fine last year for people. I mean, he had a 88 targets, and I know you know the worry is with Odell coming that that will go down, but. You know, I, I really I don't, don't think, think so. I think 50, you know, he had 56 receptions for 639 yards, four touchdowns. Even if he hovered in that same area, I, I agree with you, Craig, where I think that in the red zone, when you have Landry, when you have Odell, when, you know, there's a lot of guys to cover. It is very difficult if he gets one-on-one coverage not to be able just to lob it up to a huge, huge man. So, I still like him, and that's why he he comes in at number eight because I think being on a good team actually benefits him. Yep, and he was he was coming on at times last year. He had a good stretch, and then you know he kind of tailed off again. I think third year guy. He's what I can't remember exactly. I have to look this up. He I, 
All right. Ndoku's still extremely young. Yeah, he'll be right. 23 this year. Right, right. yeah. See, yeah, so he's not even 23 years old yet. So, yeah, he can definitely – That I mean, that's huge. There's, I mean, there's other guys who, in their third year league or 25, 26. That's a big deal right there. He's – Showing enough promise, and he's only he's going to be twenty three years old. Yeah, he he has a chance to be very good. So I'm gonna I'm still gonna bank on that. All right, so we're at number nine now for us here. Number nine, and I went with I actually went with Austin Hooper here. Oh, he's a very little good. higher than consensus, and I'm just I, I guess I buy into Atlanta's offense a little bit, and I think overall again it's another situation where. I mean, Julio, we know he stepped up the touchdowns a little bit last year. Calvin Ridley caught some too, but I think with if Devontae Freeman stays healthy, the offense is going to be very good. Well, we, we think it will be. We talked about this last week with Matt Ryan. He goes up and down. But why can't he have two good years in a row? And if he does, I think Hooper can be a benefit, can benefit from that. So that's why I decided I'm going to go Hooper here, and I actually feel pretty decent about getting him because you can draft him in almost every draft right now too. Towards the end. So I, I like Austin Hooper mainly because a lot of the reason is I don't like a lot of the guys below this. It's not a fan. And, I, and Austin Hooper hasn't burned me yet. You know, he's he's still on my good side. So Austin Hooper went number nine for me. Yeah, I do not have Hooper here. He was outside my top ten. But I, 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 I view the next five guys very similarly. So I'm kind of right now I'm hedging my bet and going for the safer pick um, is how I view it. But I really do like Hooper, um, and I'll, I'll mention the other three guys after this. But number nine, I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan right now, but I think it is relatively safe. But I took Jared Cook. Every year I feel like I, I bag on him a little bit. I think at nine I would never end up getting him. I think he's going to go ahead of that. Um, he he put together his best season ever last year, which – you know, he did, but he's so it, right, it warns me at this late of a the, but he's on the Saints, and we've all seen yeah. that Drew Brees will get you the ball no matter who you are. So if he gets open at all, he'll be fine. And maybe he's not going to repeat what he did last year, but I think he'll still put up just strong numbers. Just very like I don't think there's a whole lot of risk with him as long as he stays healthy. And he's never had, um, you know, he's never had huge injury risk. Uh, huge injury concerns. You know, he, he generally plays a, f- a full year. So yeah, he comes here. I'm not excited about it, but I think if you if you got him here, you can get him. If you got him really late and you got him, you know, as the ninth overall tight end, good. You know, <laughs> that's, that's yeah, how just, I feel. His game log scares me. What, what he does, does like, like, so he had four, four games, games of over 100 yards. Okay, okay. that's it. He, he is my number 10. So, so. it's. This is, this is the, the players aren't great around here, so he does fall. <laughs> exactly. He had four games over 100 yards, so he had a nine for 180, an eight for 110 with two touchdowns, a seven for 100 with a touchdown, a seven for 116. Then he surrounds that with four for 49, five for 31, four for 20, two for 10, two for 20, four for 52, three for 31, two for 32, two for 23, two for 20, three for 28. That is a lot of bad games. It is, with, but I do have to say he was on a very bad team, and I'll and once again game. it was his best season. So don't don't you know? Yeah. I, I, a lot of people will fall in love with the guy, but they do every year because yeah, he looks the part. They're always they always say he's going to be in a good offense. I, obviously, New Orleans is going to be better than what he's been on before, but you know, I, and at this point, when you're taking a tight end this late, no one is going to be that consistent, and that's just the truth about it. So. You know, that your ten, my nine. It's yeah. kind of what you're going to get if you if you wait this long. You it, will have to string right tight, tight end. With, I don't. That's he's a guy though. He's like he. There's a couple of, like we talked about these guys ahead of him. Um, you know, in the Howard, Henry, Ingram, Najoku. One of those guys is going to be like a Jared Cook in his career, and is never going to quite put it together. Like Jared Cook's never quite put it together. You know what I mean? He's there, and. We keep waiting for it. And last year, I guess, was his best. And we always rank him because the talent's there. And he shows the flashes of it. And on a game-by-game basis, he's just never that terribly consistent. But, hey, it's a tight end position. This is what you're going to get. So, you know. One of those other guys will be a Jared Cook. We'll be in five years. We'll be like, I know he can do it. I still, he's just going to show flashes and just won't quite do it and annoy us. But, yeah. All right. So that was my... Yeah, those end up being my 10 there. 
and so we're that was your nine. So I guess we're at your ten. My ten. So my ten is Vance McDonald, and honestly, once again, I don't think he'll be consistency, but I do think that he is in a good position in order to get more targets. And I there is a few guys underneath him that I think are young and talented, but he showed me enough, especially when they are going to lose Antonio Brown and Jesse James. So he should be the clear cut number one tight end. Um, when he gets the ball, he's extremely hard to get down. Um, you know, do I? I don't know if he's necessarily going to see a huge spike, but I think that he is almost guaranteed to repeat at least what he did last year, which is 600 yards, four touchdowns. I think that is incredibly safe to assume. So that's why he comes in at number 10, and he does have a little bit of a an upside because, you know, what if Roethlisberger falls in love with him or, you know, the – hundred and whatever targets that uh, Antonio Brown got, you know, what if he does get 20 of those, you know, he did, he has 72 last year. So it's not that crazy to think that, you know, he might be in, in line to, to kind of flourish, but I don't know. He's been in the league for a while. He's finally going to get his chance to shine. He came in at 13 for me, but he's, he's just in a group. He's in a group of guys that could go anywhere. I'm not sure of, I don't have strong feelings <laughs> for one or the other, you know. If you if you want, if I moved him up a couple of my ranks right now, it wouldn't yeah, no big deal. But he does have a shot. Yeah, it is. We keep we hype up James Washington slightly. Think maybe he'll get some of those targets, but hey, maybe they go to Vance McDonald and he looks really really good. It's it's definitely a possibility, and it's not a bad risk to take. That's a, that's a good one to take, I think, down here. So I mean, like you're going. Um, like you're definitely saying you want Vance McDonald because of the potential over like a Delaney Walker or Greg Olson or somebody like, you know, somebody like that. And I yeah, I have a really hard time. I think I think I'm just finally cutting away, I, even if they might have another good year in them or one more year. Like a Delaney Walker, Olson will just never show up on my bench. It will never show yep. up on my team. You know, call it what it is. I don't know. Maybe I'm just out of the game too quick, but I would at that point and. Just to, and I want to get your feedback on this too, Craig, is where these next three guys kind of showed up. Because really in the the 9 to 13, I think we're all incredibly close for me. But, you know, I'm I'm still kind of eyeing uh, Trey Burton. I, I think that people are really, really low on the guy. He comes in at number 11 for me. Uh, you know, I, he, he was fine. And I think with Mitchell Trubisky, keeps getting better. Um, I, I like his upside. Um and then also I like Herndon and then obviously you have Hooper even higher than I do. But um, I, I think those three guys are the kind of in their, their parts of their career where they could break out. And I think they all have um, that type of talent and Herndon incredibly young still. So yeah, what I actually did here, I have Burton at 11. Um, I, again, it's, this is, I don't want those other guys. I don't want the Walkers, the Olsons, the Rudolphs, the, reads the grams who don't have it anymore. So I went with Trey Burton 11 and actually Chris Herndon came in 12 for me once, but I had a Vance McDonald. Oh, look at that. Yeah. We're very well, we're on par on this one. Yeah. And that's just, it's, be, it's, it's because of the potential. The, the tight end position is one where potential is pretty much going to be everything for me here at the end. If you're going to wait, I'm going to get the guy who has potential because there's always going to be these other guys. You are, you can always get the guy who's going to get you six for 60. You know, that guy's going to be there. It might be Delaney Walker. It, that guy will be there, and you can fill that guy in always. And so why not take that chance and look, maybe maybe it's Trey Burton, maybe it's Chris Herndon, maybe it's Vance McDonald, maybe one, maybe Austin Hooper, maybe it's one of those guys that becomes the next tight end to jump up. Two years ago, we would have never thought it was George Kittle. You know, from his, even, we, we liked him last year, even after his first year, but didn't know he would become that good. No, it, in, yeah, in, exactly. And even like Zach Ertz, Zach Ertz hovered for a couple of years with potential, never quite did. And all of a sudden he just did. So yeah, I, I'm going to take a guy who has an upside. I don't see that right now. I mean, there's no up. Delaney Walker, I've been saying he's been done for three years now. Right. I mean, I, I was saying he was done when we started the podcast in, in you know, 2016. Yeah, and uh, this, it's interesting too, because if you look at it, I, I think that this is the year where people will almost the tide is shifting where I think uh, there's a lot of guys that are going to be ranked very, very low or are currently in, in certain um, lists. If you look at them 
and I agree with it because you're you're talking about people that were just guaranteed, like people just put them in the top ten because that's just what they assume they would do. But we're talking about Jordan Reed. People are gonna finally give up on him, even though you should have given up on him two years ago because of the injury. You're talking about Kyle Rudolph, which you know is whatever. People were really overhyping Jimmy Graham last year, uh, you know, and then Greg Olson as well. That's unfortunate he got hurt, and you know I just you know he's kind of off my radar now. But those are the type of guys that are. You know, just kind of they're they're the ones that are going to be fading off in in you know, into kind of maybe just streaming territory, and you're going to see a lot of these young guys get drafted because they they really do have a lot more potential to score, uh, and that's really what it's coming down to when you're you you can't guarantee yardage anymore. Yep, yeah, that's those, like especially like a Jordan Reed. And we will say we could say this forever. The guy is extremely talented, and when he's healthy. And can put it together. He's gonna. He probably will even show flashes this year, and he'll fool somebody, right? And you know what? I don't know how many times I've talked about Jordan Reed and how you just stay away from him because at some point he'll burn you. And guess what? I let him do that to me last year. <laughs> I let it happen in in a playoff game. <laughs> and, and that's a. I mean, and that's a rough one too because there's no ill will there. I, I really do wish that he would have stayed healthy so we could have seen what he would have become because he was that talented. But man, I mean, what, you know, if you're drafting for your fantasy, you just you can't put yourself in that position. No, it's you know, I can't believe I, 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 I fell for it. Be, not even really fell for it. The tight end position was just weak. It really was. And so, hey, you got a guy who's putting up some kind of production who you know is talented in the in the past. Maybe he could do it again, and he no, he didn't do it. So and, I have to yeah. ask last question before we yeah. sign off: Is there anyone that we haven't talked about? like someone later on down the list that, you know, you just have, you know, you can't have any reason why you're just like, I like this guy. I think that he's going to be special. He has a chance to really do something. Well, I mean, okay. Austin's fear and Jenkins is with the Patriots. So you just got to maybe think about it. Right. Um, I don't really buy it, but Hey, that's one that you, you don't hundred percent know how they're going to, how it's going to work without Gronk. And maybe, maybe, he does something. I, it's that guy's another talented guy who just never has quite done it. But a player who I feel like people kind of forget after he got hyped up last year is Mike Gusecki. He, um, was really one of those guys that people hyped going into last year as a potential rookie to break out, which none of it doesn't really happen at the tight end position. And people seem to forget that. And now he is just completely, I think, forgotten. And he was on a bad team with a bad quarterback. It's, I think, the situation's actually improved this year. What does he have? Is Josh McCown there now? No, or was it Fitzpatrick? I think I get those guys. All. Mix it, Fitzpatrick. It, either way, his quarterback situation can be better, even if Rosen ends up taking it over. Maybe that's one that's just hundred percent forgotten about. And all, and he, you know, starts looking a little bit better, like a has the potential at tight end, like people thought he did. So, I'm, I'm interested. In, I'm not going to draft him in anywhere, but I'm going to keep my eye on him and just see kind of how that plays out. And yeah, that's, about, I, that's an interesting one because he was in in a very good pass catching tight end in college, and you know, I wasn't surprised when he didn't do anything in the NFL his first year, especially on that team, because as we talk about, it takes so long to, for them to develop. But, um, yeah, he kind of like wide receivers where we always tout the second, third year guys that are going to break out because they finally get it. Tight ends can be very similar. And usually it's almost like three, four, five. Yeah, really. It might not even be this year, but he still might be a year or two down the line before, but again, there's going to be somebody down here and, I think he's one of the best chances. I mean, Hawkinson, we could talk about Hawkinson. He's up here. Noah Fant, the two rookie tight ends, but I don't I don't buy rookie tight ends. I don't buy into it. No, it's just, you know, like Dallas Goddard, he has some value on his own outside of, you know, without being the number one guy. But if Ertz ever went down, all of a sudden, boom, you got a, you got a sure thing top 10 guy, if not top five. Yeah, he's a guy that, without Ertz, I would be, I would be 100% in on him. That's how strongly I feel about him. And I, I don't know why. I, um, You know, he, he's just one of these guys where I think he's going to be very, very good. And I, I struggle with it because I don't 
you know, I don't, I've never really thought in the past three, four years, I've never thought too much of Deshaun Jackson, uh, you know, as far as he's great for stretching the field, but I, I don't see him as a, you know, a possession wide receiver that is going to take away too many targets from the guys around him. And you have Elshon, who is kind of injury prone, and you have Nelson Aguilar, who, you know, can show up or just not. I mean, last year he kind of just disappeared. So I, to myself, not that I would draft him this way, but if I had to throw a crazy prediction against the wall, I could see the Eagles just finding a way to get this guy the ball or put him on the field, and I think he'll do the rest. So he's extremely interesting to me, even though you know I can't, <laughs> I can't rationally draft him or, <laughs> or put him in my lineup. But yeah. he is going to be the guy I'm watching carefully. Um, and, it, you know, it'll be kind of one of these things. As soon as I get a, a whiff that Earth might be ailing at all, uh, I'm going to be just picking him up just in case because I think he has <laughs> got that upside. He, he does. So that's going to be, yeah, if Ertz ever were to go down, that would be like the biggest tight end pickup I've ever seen. The number one waiver wire of the week, which just doesn't usually happen, and that would be a sure thing. But And I know um, I, I yeah. said that the last one, but the last one, because <laughs> you've talked about him before, but uh, a lot of people will wonder about Baltimore and their tight end situation, yeah. having two yeah. very young guys. And I know you like Andrews, so do you have an opinion on him? You know, not he's another one where I, it's more, it's almost like a Mike Gusecki type thing where I like the talent and I like the potential, but I'm not, he is one spot ahead of Gusecki in my ranks, but I'm just not he's not on my radar for draft. He's on my radar just to watch the first couple of games. Maybe he's even player. Maybe in the pre, I don't like to pay. I don't pay too much preseason attention, you know, to anything, but maybe in the preseason, see how he does. If he looks like a player and then watch week one, week two, is he coming on? That's where I'd get him. He's not even, he won't be anywhere near my radar for the draft, but Andrews, Gusecki, you know, those kind of players, the rookies can keep watching and see what they're going to do. Do you think do you think that there's any I don't do you have any not interest I should say but do you think that Hurst will actually come on this year at all? I I've just I lean I lean towards Andrews for some reason. I don't know why that is. I just kind of do. So I, I feel like it's I don't He was healthier healthy. last year, that's for sure. <laughs> I, just, I just and it's not even um not even like a lot. I just slightly lean that way. And he, I guess consensus does too. I'm looking at Andrews is twenty second. Versus 31st. I just don't see there's any way both of them can. So I just, I'm going to go with the Andrews on that and keep it there. But hey, I got actually, just, we literally, I just got a question that came in through email as the episode was going on. So I thought I'd bring it up here quick. Real quick. It's from Chris Moore. He said, Should I keep Alvin Kamara or prominently, prominently wear a white leather belt? <laughs> <laughs> What is it with our league, man? They they love doing this now. It's like two uh, two episodes in a row. Right. I, yeah. I got nothing but love for you, Chris, and I think you should do both, buddy. Yeah. That, <laughs> that, that's, I mean, that came in during the episode, so I thought I'd bring it up. <laughs> and, and yeah. So I think you're keeping Alvin Kamara. Do you still have him on your team? Who has him on? Uh, yeah, that's definitely me. <laughs> All right, good. So you're set. All right. <laughs> I think that'll do it for tight end talk. We'll be back next week. Talk to you guys then. 